decomposition of group 2 nitrates is quite a popular kind of question so it'll be very useful for you to remember the equation by heart right nitrates group 2 when they decompose give us the magnesium oxide or the group 2 oxides and a mixture of gases which will be nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas so once we form the equation Okay, nitrates, oxides, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas, we balance it, we can actually do the more calculation. We have 29.7 grams of magnesium nitrate. So once, once we have it, we can actually find the number of moles of magnesium nitrate. Divide by the MR, magnesium is 24, nitrates. 124 right and we use our calculator we should get 0 0.2 moles once we have 0 0.2 moles we are interested in oxygen over here for every two moles of magnesium nitrate we have one mole of oxygen so 0 0.2 moles will give us 0 0.1 mole of oxygen and then we are if we want to find a mass we are interested in the mass, so mass of oxygen is not too difficult. Moles multiplied by is MR. We will get 3.2 grams. Alright, so form the equation. Be very familiar with this equation. Decomposition of group 2 nitrates, and then you can find the moles for nitrates you can find the most for any of the other three products that can come out for tin for tin can be just a recall question the solubility of calcium hydroxide versus barium hydroxide right calcium hydroxide is less soluble than barium hydroxide Thermal stability of carbonates, calcium carbonates versus barium carbonates. Calcium carbonate actually decomposes much easily at a lower temperature than barium carbonate. So stability of carbonates is lower for calcium, higher for barium. So it's more of a recall question. Fifteen. Halogen lamps when we first switch it on the heat will be produced and we get a distinct purple color right and we have options of the iodine the purple vapor the purple color is actually due to the purple vapor in other words it's actually iodine gas right so the heat will actually cause it to sublime and then we have the purple color four graphs or three graphs which of the following four options is not reflected in the three graph above so we look at the options and then we check whether is the graph is up there atomic radius atomic radius across a period sodium all the way to sulfur it will be decreasing why so because as you go from left to right we have more protons and the protons will pull the ring closer to the center right you will attract the outer electron so the ring or the shell actually gets smaller and smaller as you go from left to right as we get more and more protons so radius should be decreasing it is actually this graph over here right so this is graph a or rather this option a conductivity conductivity it should be increasing from sodium to aluminium because they are metals and aluminium will have higher conductivity because it has three electrons donated per atom of aluminium right and then from there subsequently it will drop as we reach the non the semiconductors and the non-conductors so you we are looking for one that peaks at aluminium 
no this one peaks at silicon this one keeps increasing all the way so there is no graph that shows the electrical conductivity we check the ionization energy ionization energy increases generally across the period it's harder to remove than electron again because we have more and more protons holding on to the electrons right it is actually this graph but if you notice it doesn't increase linearly all the way there's some deviations why so because from here we are removing from the electron from the s orbital whereas from here we are removing from the p orbital and it's easier to remove from p because p is slightly further away and then there's a slight dip here also because for phosphorus we are moving from p3 orbital for sulfur we're moving from p4 orbital right, there's a bit of repulsion for p4 compared to p3 because p4 we have a pet electron and due to the repulsion here it makes it easier to remove this electron right compared to a p3 where the electrons are all unpaired so there's no repulsion within the orbital okay so in short this is a graph for ionization energy generally increasing and a slight deviation along two points melting point this is a graph for melting point as you go from left to right we actually have on the left side we have metals so this is metallic bonding and it's stronger as you go from left to right because we have more delocalized electrons silicon is giant ionic no giant covalent okay, giant covalent and it's very strong held together by covalent forces so it has a very high melting point as you come down to here phosphorus and sulfur we have simple covalent molecules and they are held together the molecules are held together by van der Waals forces which are weak so it peaks at silicon and then it drops when it goes to the simple covalent molecules which statement of ammonia is completely correct Ammonia acts as a nuclear file by accepting a pair of electrons when it reacts with bromoethane. That is incorrect. Okay. Bromoethane, when it reacts with ammonia, ammonia has a lone pair of electrons. Right, and so it will be attracted to this carbon here, which is partially positive charge it acts as a nucleophile that is correct okay but it actually doesn't accept a pair of electrons it actually donates so this is wrong ammonia can form a coordinate bond with hydrogen ion to form ammonium ion so ammonia with lone pair and then we have hydrogen with no electrons H plus so what happens is you will use two electrons here it will actually form a dative bond with hydrogen ions and then they will give us the NH4 plus that you are familiar with so this is true okay. ammonia as a base accepts hydroxide ions no nope. okay if it's a base it will accept except protons H plus the shape of ammonia molecule is pyramidal with bond angles 109.5 right, it is pyramidal but the bond angle will be slightly less than 109.5 about 107 